if you don't do something to entertain yourself, to feel relaxed, to feel happy, then you're gonna get more depressed into the feeling that you only have to study, you have no life, you can't do anything else. Thank you very much uh, for coming. And um, um, so for the viewers who don't know much about you yet, if you can please uh, give us a bit of your background, your name, which country you're from, and your area of specialty, your education, training, and yeah, what's going on? Uh, hello, my name is Eva Borbulescu. I'm from Romania. Uh, I moved to UAE seven years ago uh, and I graduated with a Bachelor in Electrical Engineering. Uh, now I'm gonna start my Master's in Robotics in September at Heriot Watt University. And my field of studies is Robotics, AI, and this is what I want to specialize in. Um, you said you're going to Heriot Watt soon for doing your robotics thing. So yeah. why robotics? Why not? business management or engineering management or uh, project management or marketing by robotics? Uh, because I feel that robotics is an ever-growing field. It will continue to advance and uh, I usually get bored very easily and I feel that if I study in this field I can continue growing, I can continuously learn something new and it's interesting. I want to keep my brain occupied with something. We have masters in mechatronics also. Yes. Um, so why not mechatronics and why robotics? Uh, during my final year of university, I took the introduction to robotics subject, and it was very interesting. I had a really nice teacher, and my lab instructor was very good as well, and. I started to love robotics, even though I didn't consider it as my future uh, back then. I wanted to focus on power engineering or power distribution, but it was very interesting to see how when you program a robot, it will do what you told him to do, and I want to learn more about it. And I felt that robotics is a good master, it's a good field that I can, from which I can get more knowledge. Plus, the university is a very good one, and uh, I went there, I saw the labs, I saw the equipment, the professors gave me a tour, and I saw the potential that I have. Uh, for the students who are listening to you, um, how important it is to have a postgrad degree? Why not you do just bachelor and start working? So, we are comparing the hands-on experience or the degree. So doing a degree is better, like postgrad degree, masters or PhD or undergrad and then experience. Um, as one of my teachers said that after bachelor degree, it's good to work for at least six months and then go into your masters, but not start masters right after bachelor. And he was right because I noticed after I got my first job that the knowledge that I have from university is very good, but in the real world, you don't use what you studied completely. And the personal skills are more used, like working in a team or how to adapt in a new company, in a new field. And I feel that studying, like continue studying the master's or PhD in the future, master's is an approfundation of what you studied, you're going towards a field that you like and you want to study more about it and to, per to be better in it. In university, in a bachelor, you focus on more subjects. You learn from math to physics to engineering, civil engineering, electrical engineering, computer. But when you choose your master's, you choose exactly what you want to be a professional in. Mm -hmm. So. It's very good if you want to be a professional in a specific field. I feel that nowadays um, jobs and companies, they require you to have at least a master's. It's very rare when you find a job that only requires bachelor. Even now I found jobs that they say, okay, you finish bachelor, but at least start the master's within a year. Mm -hmm. So I feel that this is very good and it helps you get a good job in the future. PhD, for example, is very good if you love research. So if you love studying, if you love researching, it's amazing. 
but not everyone feels that way. So, to me, masters is very good for the moment. In the future, I don't exclude the possibility for a PhD. Mm -hmm. But I believe that I can succeed in my career with masters, but mm -hmm. also with bachelor, depending on the field. Mm -hmm. So, the first question is why you chose Dubai? And the second thing is that how Dubai treated you? So, my father got a job in Dubai, he applied here. Uh, and as a family, we believe that it's good to stick together. It's mm -hmm. hard for a husband and a wife to live separately in different countries. Mm -hmm. So my family's uh, idea and conception was to stay together. Where you are, we are coming with you. So to me, it was an, a great opportunity. I always wanted to leave my home country. I believe that mm -hmm. I can succeed abroad. And I always dreamed of visiting Dubai. Okay. At the time, okay. I didn't have the opportunity, mm -hmm. but now I felt that it's a good idea, it's a good decision, and we were right. Um, UAE has been amazing to us. I love this country. I feel like it's my own country. I feel safe. Uh, mm -hmm. I love the people. Everyone is nice, respectful. Um, I can get quality education here. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's been really good. Like, I feel sad when I have to leave the country or go travel somewhere else. I mm -hmm. can't wait to get home. I can't mm -hmm. wait to visit the places that I know. Everything feels amazing here. It's a beautiful country, beautiful people. And the way they run the country, it's exactly how we were hoping for in our country. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like they care for their people and mm -hmm. this is very good. Don't you think Dubai spoils you even at some time? You feel like spoiled? Uh, not really. As a girl, mm, living in a different country other than Dubai, UAE, is hard. Uh, Europe is civilized. Uh, we can say that it's not. But for my whole mm -hmm. childhood, my mother kept telling me, be careful, don't go out at night. Uh, people can steal you from the streets. Uh, you're a girl, you always need to be careful. And I always had this fear, you can do this, you can do that. Mm -hmm. You have to be careful with the people around you, you can't trust anyone. And now here I can go outside at 2 a.m. I can do anything I want, no one touches me. I feel safe. Uh, and it's amazing for a girl. Uh, and this should be in every country. And now when mm -hmm. I go back to my home country, I'm scared again. The moment that I step onto the ground, I feel like, okay, I need to keep my wallet safe. I need to be careful with the people around <laughs> me. Uh, I'm not safe. I can't go outside at night. They are looking weird at me, the way they talk around me. And the things that they are saying, I can feel that it's not safe. And now I'm 25, but I still don't feel safe. Mm -hmm. So, and I can't wait to come home to feel safe again, to go mm -hmm. out to know that no one is going to hurt me. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm so relieved and uh, kind, kind of hurt also to, to hear about your experiences. Um, I feel sorry for that because uh, I'm, uh, everyone deserves to feel safe and enjoy. And, and, uh, and so I have an, another story to tell you because, uh, again, living in Dubai, I, I, you know, I leave my car on sometime. Uh, I forget to lock my car very often. And next morning I will come and say, oh, my car was open. I will go to the mall. Uh, it happened in Mall of Emirates when I left my car running for three hours. And I came back and said, oh, so AC is running and the whole car, is, is the whole thing. But I feel like I have to consider I should have a set of rules for Dubai and set of rules as soon as I'm out of Dubai. And uh, the same thing is with when I go back to my country, I start comparing the infrastructure and cooling system and water supply and everything. So, yeah, that, that happens. Since we are talking about Romania, so let's talk about, before moving on to the next topic, can we, can we talk bit, a bit about the food? Yes. Yeah, so if you can, you know, for the audience, what is the best food of Romania? If anyone end up in Romania or go to Romanian, you know, a restaurant here. 
Uh, yeah, Romanian restaurant. No anymore. restaurant here. <laughs> no. That, I was actually that's thinking about mm. opening up a restaurant in Romanian because there is no restaurant here with okay. our food. And it's interesting because people would be very excited to try it. Mm. It's going to be a good business if someone op- opens it. Um, our best food depends on the person. Mm. So we have... Our food is very similar to some Arabic, Turkish food. Mm. We have, for example, sarmale. It's okay. actually uh, vegetables, rice, meat in leaves or cabbage leaves. Mm. And we can also see it in the supermarket here. Um, and we have mamaliga, which is polenta. And we eat it with everything. Uh, what is polenta? Polenta is similar. So you boil it and it becomes, it's yellow. Mm. And... You can eat it with uh, these cabbage rolls or uh, with cheese, with a labne. Uh, we replace the bread with it mm. sometimes. So it's like rice, for example. Instead of rice, we eat polenta. It's traditional Romanian. Mm-hmm. Um, we have papanash, which are donuts with labne. Can you, can you give the same Papanash. Papanash. Okay. Yes, it's uh, sweet for us, traditional. Mm. And we put labne on top and some jam, uh, cherry jam or forest fruit. And it's very good. Everyone loves it when they go to our country. And we have the sour soup. This is Romanian uh, specialty. And we make different types of sour soup. Uh, Bean, sour soup, uh, vegetables, everything. If you are thinking about um, uh, introducing this cuisine to the way, uh, let me be the first reviewer. And uh, you can actually bring some food and I can try and give you my yes. feedback as sure. a neutral person. And uh, definitely I'm, I'm going to give good feedback because <laughs> I want more. Um, what is Romania famous for? Um, usually Romania is famous for Dracula's castle. Uh, he was actually Vladimir, that's his name. He was a ruler and he's famous for being very strict and he would uh, punish the people, the wrongdoers, by sticking a wood stick through their body, butt, through their butt to the mouth. So they are kind of... They were killed like that. That was his method. So Romania is known for that, but people took him and they gave the name Dracula and now he's famous for that. This is everyone when they hear about Romania, they say, oh, Dracula. So yeah. that, that Hotel Transylvania, Transylvania. Has, has something to do with... Yes. Yeah, so that, I, I was thinking about that. Okay, but, but I mean, come on, come on they, they give you a good name. It's, uh, just, just think about the people who made yes. a business out of this yeah. story and there are so many movies. Yeah, um, Hotel uh, Transylvania. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I have seen both parts and uh, they, they were very good. So if I visit Romania, there must be some museum about Dracula or something. Or there uh, are, yeah. And now I noticed last year that in the airport they made special shops with uh, Dracula so and... Like food with Dracula on the packages, everything. So I believe, yeah, they have, especially if you go towards the mountains, yeah, and the castles, if mm, you want to visit. Okay, okay that that's great. What what else? What about the the uh, what about the music? The music. Uh, we have traditional music. It's more popular. Um, and people are dancing together, like they're holding hands in a circle and dancing. And we also have the pop music from the singers and the rock. So if I have to try some Romanian music, can you, can you make a recommendation? I don't listen to much Romanian music. I usually listen to Arabic. Nowadays, I love Arabic songs, Indian songs. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, again, can can you make a recommendation? Do you know any one singer? Um, I know some Not singers. Uh, Andra, for example, she okay. sings also popular. Okay, yeah. I'll try Andra. Okay, that, that's okay. So I think we have uh, covered. Uh, uh, 
bit of politics, bit of food, bit of uh, uh, music uh, from Romania. And uh, so moving on to, did you visit the pavilion of uh, Romanian Expo? Um, yes, I visited. Yes, I went a few times actually. Yeah, I think I, I also, I have a video on Expo, I think I covered Romania also. If you have a time machine, you can go back as a student in first year. Uh, what different you will like to do this time? I would sleep more. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I, I always told myself, you're gonna finish this exam and then you're gonna sleep. And then again and again and again and I wasted so much time and I didn't sleep. And sleeping is very important for a student because mm. if you lack sleep, then you're gonna forget everything you studied. And I know myself, I would trust myself more. When I, you say trust myself more means I that's kept, very loaded uh, statement. I just kept doubting myself. I mm. felt that I won't do well, I won't succeed, that I didn't study enough. I should have trusted myself and what I did until then more because all this negative talk in your head and like it's not motivating you mm. and when you're standing in front of the paper in the exam if you're thinking that I'm not gonna remember I all know this I didn't spend enough time studying mm. then you're gonna do a mistake for sure so mm. this is one of the things that I would change I uh, you know I can assure you that this is one of the best advice I have received for the students that trust yourself and sleep more. I can't emphasize enough. Uh, I don't want to sound like you are interviewing me because I have so many stories to tell as well. Uh, yes, uh, you need you need good sleep if possible. I know saying is easy but when you're stressed out it's not that easy and when you're living with in, uh, in dorms uh, with other people it's not that simple uh, and yes again trusting yourself. Uh, I know it's not easy but what you said I 100% agree with you. It's, it's a very good advice and anyone who's listening who, who wants to you know, enjoy his student life should listen to your advice. What else? You're doing so good. What else <laughs> as a student? Mm, I would actually change my studying habits. Mm -hmm. uh, I always wanted to... I had colleagues who were uh, studying during the day mm -hmm. and colleagues who were studying during the night. And I knew that if I study during the day and then sleep at night, it would be better. But I kept feeling that I'm going to forget everything during the night. And when I wake up, I won't remember anything. Okay. And I always found something to do when I came back from university. And mm -hmm. even for one hour, I would just lay down, do nothing, and then I would fall asleep. And then wake up at 12, 1 and study. And I want to change that. I would change it. It's better to study until 11, 12 and then sleep to get those important hours of sleep uh, and then, okay, wake up at 5 and study. But the sleeping time is very important and studying time during the day, during the morning is the best. You can retain much more information. We cannot talk about your uh, academic life without talking about your mother. Yes. So quickly, if you can go through how much of a support she was. Uh, so I didn't get my driving license until now. I, <laughs> I just enrolled because I told myself I need to focus on university. I don't want to start studying anything more. I want to study only engineering for now. And I kept postponing and postponing and she supported me always. And she drove me to university every day, uh, back and forth. For any activity I had, everything I had to do, she drove me. And she came to innovation fairs, to all the uh, graduation, and even for my for the summer camp uh, last week. She was there for me, and she's always there for me. She supports me. She wants me to achieve my greatest potential. It's true that it's tiring for her, and I want to help her. I need to get my license and be more independent, but she will always support me. Um, working in a team, 
if you can you know discuss something about your experience how important it is to work in the team and how to survive in a team how to navigate through the team members yes. please um working in a team is very important i realize that when you're working with more people you can get ideas from multiple directions and then you can solve a problem more easily uh it's very hard when you're alone it's true that sometimes when teams are made in university or in any other places you don't always get to choose your partners mm-hmm. and some of the colleagues don't always work uh don't invest time are not serious about mm-hmm. their work and then most you, of them yes you get frustrated you get mad at them you try to push them to do their job because you have the work is split in different parts and they need to do their part because you need to do your part but then when they don't do their part you need to do their part also yeah. and you get mad at them and then you want more points in the project but you can't ask for them because it's not fair and at the same mm. time i didn't want to cause problems to those colleagues but i realized that even now in the work field it's important to work in a team especially in the research because everyone comes with an idea and when you graduate you have more experience people have great ideas and if something happens obstacles in life you can solve it together maybe your idea is not that good but your partner's idea is very good so you can solve a problem and i believe it's very important to have patience some people have problems and if you True. understand if you listen to them if you talk to them and you don't just judge them because you don't work mm. you realize that they are good people they want to work but it was a time in their life when they couldn't some people do have problem in, in their life but sometimes you're working with a group member and you feel like he has a lifetime problem it's never yeah. going to be solved um we don't talk about how to deal with the faculty members yeah. i have rarely seen people talk about it uh and and the faculty members you work with most of them came with so many different countries different religions different backgrounds your advice on that how to what are the tips to get the best out of the faculty members when you are in the class um i see it was pretty hard in the first years uh because some teachers had an approach where they would scare you mm-hmm. sometimes into giving up engineering if you didn't pass this exam you should drop out of engineering you're not good for this and i remember that that exam the teacher told us if you don't pass this one i'm going to ask you to come to my office and i'm going to ask you to drop out of engineering and i was in the supermarket and when i saw that i passed i started crying out of happiness <laughs> i actually thought that i would have to drop out of engineering if you don't mind which which subject it was uh it was something related to hardware it was second year okay. second year we were getting into electrical it wasn't hard but we were so scared mm. and throughout the years some of the teachers actually in my example like i was told to give up the subject before the final exam mm-hmm. because it was too late to make up for how bad i did during the semester and he told me just do it another semester but here i want to point out how important resilience is even if something like this happens it's mm-hmm. important to not give up mm-hmm. i went into another room I left my phone everything away. I took the book and I studied mm. for 2 weeks straight non-stop. Mm. I only slept 8 and studied and I passed and I managed to raise my grade so much up even the teacher mm. was surprised. Mm. And it's really important I know that sometimes it's good to have a tough teacher to push you to go above your limits, but some students need a different approach. Mm-hmm. I was the type of student that needed kind teachers to be talk nice to because I'm very easily influenced by the tone of the teacher or mm-hmm. what he says to me and it was hard to study those subjects where the teacher scared me but I understand that it was important for my future 
because now mm-hmm. nothing is too hard. I can manage anything that comes my way. Mm-hmm. So, uh, don't you think uh, that uh, if one of the faculty members is pushing you to the limit, some students might break yes. and actually break away? And uh... Yeah, they actually break, they give up. I had students who actually gave up engineering and went to another course, another field. Um, it's true that it's hard, but sometimes you need to stick to it. Even though you feel that you're not going to f- succeed, you're going to fail, mm-hmm. even if you fail, you stick to it. If you know that it's good for your future, if you know that you like it, you're mm-hmm. going to finish it. Somehow, mm-hmm. but you'll finish it. In time, it's going to mm-hmm. get better. But if we give up when obstacles come our way, in life, everything is hard. Like Life is not easy. Mm-hmm. So if we have this mentality of giving up when something is hard, we're never going to succeed. I wasn't the type to go and discuss with them if they were mean or too strict or scary. I would not say anything. I would just stick to my plan, study, gain knowledge, uh, learn as much as possible from them. Maybe someday they'll change. If not, it's okay because in my home country, the teachers were not good. They Mm. were very mean. They would Mm. say mean things to us. Here, I was expected, even though it was hard, it was supposed to be hard because it's not an easy field. So we needed to understand that life is hard and to do this. And I realized that even though in the beginning the teachers seemed very harsh on me, in the last year, they were very nice. I feel like they got used to us, they got to know us and to see Mm -hmm. that we can manage, we don't give up, and they change their way of thinking maybe, or their perspective. Now Mm -hmm. I can talk to them very easily, like we are friends. It's a different relationship right now. Mm -hmm. It's not like four years ago when I was scared and I would go to them to ask questions, but I would be terrified. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's uh, so, so nice to hear that. Again, I think your, your advice is very practical. But do you think that favoritism exists intentionally or unintentionally? Um, sometimes I felt that there are people who are more, f- they are the teacher's favorites, especially in my home country. It was very often. Here, I felt that also, mm-hmm. but in the same time, I was sometimes a favorite one. Okay. So, it <laughs> okay. was hard to mm-hmm. judge. Mm-hmm. I felt that it's more, there's more fairness here, mm-hmm. and the teachers were actually grading according to what you wrote on the paper, and if you went to them with your paper or with whatever you did, and you said, here, I believe I deserve more, they will be fair to you. If you deserve more, you will get more. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I heard that sometimes students feel that other students are their favorites, the teachers' favorites. Mm-hmm. In my case, sometimes I felt that and sometimes I felt that I was wrong. Maybe it depends also on your state of mind, how you are during that time, if you're very stressed, very scared, maybe you failed an exam, then you're going to start hating the teacher. You're going to think that it's his fault, he hates you. And moving on, you're going to hate him for the rest of the years. Uh, But if you have a mentality of, okay, maybe I should have studied more. He Mm. was right, I did something wrong. Mm. Then you're going to see them with different eyes. In this whole situation, you never mentioned that students should try to go out and entertain themselves. Do you think it is it is also part of their life? It will help them to develop their personality if they go out more often, at least once in a semester, or see more people, or visit countries? Or uh, Yes, it's very important to go out or do some recreational activity, even for one or two hours, a few times a week. It's very important. Studying is the most important part during university time and during masters or whatever. But if you don't do something to entertain yourself, to feel relaxed, to feel Mm -hmm. happy, then you're going to get more depressed into the feeling that 
you only have to study, you have no life, you can't do anything else. And yes, it's very important to relax. Uh, I didn't go too much outside mm -hmm. because all my friends were in university and we mm. were all studying all the time. Yeah. And if we went out, we went out for a short period of time or when we had a holiday or a longer break or no exams coming up. Uh, I used, my mother always told me that during these times, your best entertainment is sleeping. If you have some time, mm. sleep, because then you're mm. not going to have other time to sleep. And it's going to refresh your brain, you're going to feel better and you can continue studying. And she was right. Sleeping was important. Uh, or just five minutes. During exam time, I used to practice this. If I would have to study for weeks for an exam, at least five minutes every few hours I would take a break and watch something funny just to feel happy, to feel relaxed, to disconnect from studying. And then I would continue studying. But I felt that it's not this never ending loop of studying and it was tiring mm. for my brain. If I felt that I can do something else also to feel happy, to make myself happy, mm. yes, it's going by faster. All mm. this studying, you feel that, okay, this exam is going to come, it's going to pass, then I'm going to have more time. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to do something for mm. yourself. Thank you. Thank you very, very much for all the advice and I'm, I'm very sure it was very useful. And